What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Ultra motherboard. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of the Gigabyte Z490 motherboards. Obviously with different features on motherboards you will see different options if your board is different than this one. But the overall layout of the BIOS will be pretty much the same. Now, if you have any questions about this BIOS, whether you need help finding something or you just have a general question, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Now, when you load into the BIOS here, you'll be in easy mode. And this is where you can go ahead and, you know, just set some things up before you go ahead and install Windows. Um, it's just, again, if that's easy mode, that's kind of what it's here for. So starting off, we have our information right here, and it's gonna give us our information on our motherboard, BIOS version, CPU, and our memory. Moving down, we have our DRAM status. So you can see that we have two DIMMs installed, um, eight gigabytes running at, um, 2133 megahertz xmp is disabled but we can just hit the button and it enables it really easy like that um so that's super easy to do Be boot sequence um we only have uh one drive installed or actually we have two drives installed um but you can easily just swap these you just click it and you swap these it's really that easy um when you go ahead and do that and then you'll see your boot sequence or your final boot sequence right here up top, we have real-time information of frequencies, temperatures, voltages, and everything like that. Right here, we have our list of devices. So SATA devices, we do have one hard drive here. PCIe, you can see we have our graphics card, and you can see the speed that it is running at. And then M.2, we do have an M.2 drive installed, so it is uh you know right there down here smart fan 5 you'll see the fan speeds of all of the fans that are currently running on the system we only have one fan plugged in uh which is our cpu fan but if you click on smart fan 5 it goes into smart fan 5 and you can configure all of the fan speed controls and everything like that for all of the headers on the motherboard you can set up temperature warnings you can set up cpu fan warning um, all that stuff and of course you can see all your temperatures in here as well So you can do again all this before you even install Windows and then over here you can turn on Intel rapid storage technology You can change your language you can ask for help which basically gives you all of your uh, shortcuts there Close that out. We can go into advanced mode, which we will show you in a second again smart fan 5 We uh, were just in there one thing I do like to see on an easy mode is the load optimized defaults. Usually it's in the advanced mode towards the end. Um, here we have it right in the easy mode. So if you mess something up, you can just load the optimized defaults without having to go into, really go into the BIOS to do it. Q flash, that is going to allow you to easily flash your BIOS, save and exit, and then favorites. Um, we've added a bunch of stuff to our favorites. So I'll go ahead and show you that, you know, show you that now. Um, Favorites is basically just like all of the shortcuts that you use a lot. You have to add things into this little tab or folder, but once you have everything there, it is all of your settings um, you know, that you use all the time. So if there's a setting that you're always constantly changing, go ahead and add it into the uh, favorites and you'll be able to easily access it you know, easier than going through a few menus to go ahead and find it. Now, again, to toggle between easy mode and advanced mode, it's just F2 and you just hit that. Um, or you can, of course, just click this button, you know. Um, but once you're in there, we can go into tweaker and this is where you're going to, you know, if you're doing any overclocking or anything like that, you're going to do it all here. So um, all your CPU stuff is in this kind of first set of options here everything for the CPU, and then under advanced CPU settings, you have a lot more. Um, pretty much all of the settings, everything you can change for the CPU is right here. And then one thing that I don't remember seeing on older Z390 motherboards is these kind of tabs. Um, so you have active turbo ratios, it's set to auto, but if you enable it, you can set your turbo ratios per core, uh, which is pretty cool. Put that back on auto. Per core hyper threading disable setting, same thing. 
Turn it on manual, you can enable it, disable it per core. Go to auto, C states control, this is all your C states, so you can enable it and then, you know, set your different C states. Back on auto, turbo power limits, again, same thing. You can set your different power limits here um, if you want. And then we'll go to turbo per core limit control. Um, again, if you enable it, you can set up um, that stuff as well. So again, um, I like that they did this because it kind of just organizes things a lot better. Um, you know, and again, to change everything, you just enable it and then go in um, to the menu there. So that is very nice right there. Um, this is where you're also going to find stuff like your XMP. So if you didn't do it in the easy mode, you just go in here, hit enter, um, and then, you know, enable our profile. Very easy to do. Advanced memory settings has all of, you know, more advanced memory settings. You can actually see your SPD info as well. So if we go here and click over to our gym, we can see all of the information on that memory. Um, and then of course you can get into detail in your timings as well. And then down here is voltage. So you can see it goes, you know, CPU here, memory here, and then voltage down here. And again, we can do everything with voltage and then you can go into advanced, advanced voltage settings. You can do all of that. And then CPU VRM, that is your load line calibrations and, and everything like that. Now, if you are going to overclock, overclocking on Z490 is much like it is on Z390. It is very easy to do. On this board specifically, all you have to do is go to CPU clock ratio, change that for what you're shooting for. So with the i9-10900K, we're able to, at least in my testing with the R setup, get to 5.1 gigahertz on all of the cores. So you just type in the value that you want and you're good to go. And then you probably wanna change your voltage. So go down to voltage. And again, in our testing, you hit fixed V core and we'll probably set that to 1.3 volts and you save and you're good to go as far as overclocking goes. And we'll go over into settings, platform power. There's everything to do with platform power. IO ports, uh, this is like everything that's on the board. Um, you can enable or disable internal graphics, LAN controller, audio controller, USB configuration. You can turn on or off legacy USB support and a few other options there. Network stack configuration, NVMe configuration. Again, we have the drive installed, so we can actually go into the NVMe configuration. Uh, there, SATA and RST configuration. Again, this is all your SATA ports and, and what's installed. And again, you can change different settings there. Easy RAID, we can't go into this because we don't have RAID installed. It'll actually tell you that you don't have RAID installed or not installed, enabled rather. Um, but that is for RAID and then your ethernet controller as well. Get out of that miscellaneous. Um, so this is a, a few interesting settings. So LEDs in power system or LEDs in system power on state. Sorry guys, it's really late when I'm making this video. Um, so basically this is your RGB control. So you can turn it completely off um, in the BIOS. So if you don't want any RGBs, you turn this from on to off. Uh, LEDs in sleep hibernation and soft off states. So this allows you to have the RGB lights still on after you turn your computer off. It is off by default. Um, so if you wanted them on when you turn your system off, you can just hit this to on. And then when you turn your, your system off, your RGBs on your board will actually still light up, which is pretty cool. Um, other things you can, you know, go into TPM stuff. Um, if you have a TPM device installed out of there. PC health status, it just basically gives you your voltages. Smart Fan 5, we were already in there in the easy mode, but you can also access it, access it of course, in the advanced mode. And we'll go to system info. This again, this is all your info. So everything on your board, your BIOS versions. This is great to see because if you're not sure if you're installing an older BIOS or a new one, you can actually see the BIOS date on your current one, uh, which is good to see. You can see your processor, um, system language. You can see information on the devices that you have plugged in, whether it's PC Express or M.2. QFlash, again, that allows you to flash your BIOS. 
And then boot, this is everything to do with booting up um, your boot options and, and things like that. Secure boot, you can set up and, and everything like that. And then under save and exit, we of course can load optimized defaults. I love seeing that. I also love to see boot override. Basically, it will allow you to boot from a any drive first and then on the reboot, it will boot to your normal boot priority. Um, this is great for installing Windows from a flash drive. And then you can save and load profiles as well. And that is pretty much everything that is in this BIOS. It is easy to navigate. Um, the easy mode that you see right here has everything that you would need. I would say boot priority, XMP, um, and that is kind of basically it. Um, you know, the, the settings that I would change, maybe Smart Fan 5. It would be nice to have RGB settings in this easy mode. I know a lot of people are weirded out by RGB software. Um, it would be nice to have it kind of in the easy mode as well. So, um, but that is it for this BIOS overview. Sorry guys, if I kind of went on a tangent, uh, it is a little late again when I am recording, but if you did enjoy this video or got something out of it, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. And if you enjoy our tech content, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.